You know how in cinema sometimes you get like violent murder or aggressive murder with like opera music or some kind of really peaceful music? This is like that, except with existentialism mindfuckery. What's going on guys? Welcome to 31 Days of Horror. I am Morgan Film Fan. Let's jump into some scares. We've got a doozy today. This is a Canadian film by David Cronenberg's son, Brandon Cronenberg. David Cronenberg is absolutely famous for being the master of body horror, a Canadian director, and Brandon Cronenberg, I think this is his debut, so I think this is his first film. But this is Possessor, and this came out in 2020. This has uh, Christopher Abbott in it. Uh, Christopher Abbott I recognize from um, It Comes at Night. He was also in one of my favorite films of 2020 called Black Bear. And he also, I have to watch it again because it's been a while, but he was in Martha, Marcy, May Marlene. Um, I don't remember exactly who he played in that film, but I got to rewatch it and figure that out. And then this also stars the actress, let me find her name. Andrea Riseborough. Uh, Andrea Riseborough does a really good job in this as well. Um, this was filmed all in Toronto and uh, it's about, it starts off, there's this really skinny black woman uh, stabbing the hell out of this really giant um, white man and uh, he, he's at like a gala or some kind of fancy event at a restaurant or something like that and she's just stabbing the shit out of him and then she goes to shoot herself but he can't, she can't do it and then the cops shoot her down and uh, then this woman wakes up in a, in like a, some kind of bed where she's attached to like this whole body scanning equipment kind of thing. And uh, her job basically is to infiltrate people, uh, infiltrate people's heads and, uh, you know, go on missions or whatnot. Kind of like Inception style, except instead of infil uh, infiltrating a dream, you kind of infiltrate a whole person. So uh, that's her introduction. You meet her. Uh, Jennifer Jason Lee is in this film. She's a phenomenal actress. She's, uh, she's a very beautiful woman for her age, actually. She's, uh, she's like pushing 60. Um, very, very good looking woman and very uh, long time actress kind of thing. She plays a woman named Gerder. And Gerder is like the woman who guides her kind of thing and puts her under and puts her into these uh, taking over people's body states. I don't even know what you would call it. Possessions, I guess, sort of. Um, anyways, the film goes on and uh, she gets a mission to go into this man named uh, Colin Tate's body. And uh, his mission, he works for this company, this huge CEO company. Um, and uh, he is dating the, the, like the CEO leader's daughter. And his mission is basically to kill the CEO and... The daughter Ava <laughs> so his girlfriend pretty much and well she, her mission is to her mission is to infiltrate this dude's body and do that um, what happens though is the this crisis of identity uh, starts to go on especially the longer that she stays in the dude's body and um, you know the the guy the guy himself the real guy starts to discover that he's not feeling right later on with this presence in his mind kind of thing and the woman also starts to lose track of, you know, being able to uh, control him. So this film touches a lot on loss of control and anxieties and, uh, and uh, uh, ideas like that kind of thing. Um, very disturbing film. There's a lot of graphic things. There's a lot of graphic sex and there's a lot of graphic, uh, uh, like, gore. The gore effects are all practical and very well done. Like, I mean, there's eye gouges and everything. Um, and graphic sex, like, you see everything. You see parts, you see parts going in parts. You see everything. Um, it was enjoyable. This has a lot of rewatch value because it's extremely confusing. 
I mean, you're getting a film by David Cronenberg's son, it's going to be pretty confusing. Uh, the third act gets really confusing, especially with the, the crisis of um, identity and stuff like that that goes on. Apparently Tate's job is to, I, this was confusing, his job, like his literal job, is to spy into people's homes and identify curtains. Because that's what he does for like five minutes. There's a there's a scene where he's he's at a computer and he's uh, hacking cameras in people's houses, and th that's like he's just observing curtains. He'll zoom into the curtains and then he'll describe the curtains for his boss. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And they don't really give a reason why or what the company's purpose is for the curtains. Like, what is what is that gonna do? They really don't explain that, but it's quite confusing. Um, there's, there's sex scenes where Tate is having sex with Ava, but he, like, it's the woman, it, her name is, uh, Taz, Tazia, I think, but, uh, Taz for short. But anyways, since she's in his body, I was like, what would it be like to, for a straight woman to be in a man's body and have sex with another woman? <laughs> I, I kept thinking about that. I'm like, hmm, that must be really confusing. And how would she, like, be able to do it? Unless she's attracted to the woman, right? Because if she has no attraction whatsoever, how is that going to work kind of thing? Like, it must be pretty tough. Um, it's the kind of movie that raises those questions. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Um, th it's cool how uh, Tate, there's, uh, there's times where he'll be talking to... Uh, girder outside the like outside the machine and his voice will be hybrid so it'll be a male and female voice talking at the same time i found that really cool it's very robotic and added to the the atmosphere of the, of the film really really well um i like too that uh taz the woman has an accent she's british and uh tate does not so she has to practice uh having an american accent when she's tate but tate the actor who plays tate christopher abbott he did a really good job at, because he's American, so he did a really good job at pretending to be somebody who doesn't have an American accent, trying to have an American accent. So he didn't just speak as his normal self. He kind of spoke like he was trying to have an American accent when he didn't naturally have one. And it was very, very subtle. It wasn't obvious, but there was that subtlety to him. So he did a really fine performance, in my opinion, especially in that... Um, that aspect and uh, the ending is pff, the ending is batshit the ending is very violent um there is a there is a kid death uh at the end which could be hard to see uh for some people or it could be hard to watch for some people and uh the ending is completely up in the air like um Oh, what you, ambiguous the the ending is completely ambiguous like the final scene before with the credits roll fully fully ambiguous this is why this film absolutely has rewatch value because this is one i'll have to see multiple times to uh understand fully um i really enjoyed it it was very art house so i can't say that like because i didn't fully grasp my mind around it i can't say that i i can't say it's one of my favorites but it's one that i want to watch again and it's one that um like is psychologically gripping and uh full of energy and knows what it's doing it's just it actually you know it's funny some films do this it actually kind of started making me sick to my stomach but for no logical reason like and i've heard that a lot of films do this especially with the music and sound choices um i just started feeling kind of sick and queasy and uneasy but not knowing why it was kind of like a subconscious thing and, um, and I do hear that a lot of directors do this uh, purposely. They purposely make films that uh, will make the audience feel uneasy even though they don't know why they're feeling uneasy. Um, I would say that this one did it. So obviously it's doing something right. Uh, there's scenes that you can't look away from um, and that'll haunt you and stick with you. Um, there's, a de when, there's a death involving uh, the boss, the CEO of the company, uh, played by Sean Bed, by the way. That is brutal, brutal. Like when people die and get stabbed to death, they get stabbed to death for a while. Like it keeps going and going for a little bit longer than it should. So it's that kind of film. But Possessor uh, by Brandon Cronenberg is a very interesting 
psychological horror thriller, you could say. And um, I had fun with it, and I can't wait to watch it again. So that's day 21. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to my voice, or if you like my film reviews, and there will be more to come for 31 Days of Horror. I keep wanting to say 21 Days of Horror for some reason. Uh, 31 Days of Horror is still on its way, and uh, I've got lots of reviews on the channel. Check out last year's 31 Days of Horror as well, if you're interested. But regardless, that's it. That's all for now. Subscribe to Martin Film Fan. Till next time, take care and cheers.